Petrosky F-score. In this video, I'll cover who Petrosky is, his F-score, and how to implement it with FMP and Google Sheets for analysis. First, let's take a look at who Petrosky is. Joseph Petrosky is an American professor of accounting, Stanford University Graduate School of Business, and formerly an associate professor of accounting at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Petrosky specializes in accounting and financial reporting issues, where he wrote extensively on these topics, one of which was value investing. And in this piece, he discusses the F score, and he'll use that to either buy or short stocks based on several accounting-based criteria. And in the paper, he back-tested the method and shows that it would, in fact, beat the market over a two-decade period. That paper, I'll put in the description, looks like this. Feel free to read it. So the F-score ranks companies between a score of 0 to 9 and incorporates nine factors of financial strength. And this score is broken down into three different groups, profitability, leverage, liquidity, and source of funds, and operating efficiency. For profitability, we're going to find net income, ROA, operating cash flow, and if cash flow from operations was greater than net income. For leverage liquidity, we're looking at long-term debt, current ratio, and new shares being issued. And then for operating efficiency, we're looking at a gross margin year over year and asset turnover. And what Petrosky says is you should buy companies that have a score of seven, eight, or nine, and you should not own companies that have anything less than seven. And you could even perhaps consider shorting them if they're on the low end of the spectrum. All right, let's head back to Google Sheets, open a new sheet. And the first thing we'll do is add a variable cell, put in ticker AAPL for Apple. We'll merge these. This is the PO Trosky F score. And for a variable cell, make it blue, center, all team. Next we'll index, FMP quote, back to A1 from one year. We'll index the second row, second column. Okay, there's Apple. We'll leave three through six blank, and we'll start to fill out our score. Before we do that, we'll go back to our Investopedia site. We're gonna grab what this is. Okay, paste that in here. And for now, I'm just going to put this formula down here. Okay, next we're going to need our profitability criteria. And I'll just pull those from another tab, paste them in to save time. Here this, put a line under it. Make a value column and a score column. Okay, so first we need net income and ROA. So first we'll put our ratios in here. And for that, we'll go to D8. And we'll say transpose FMP ratio symbols back to A1. And we'll just do one year. Okay, there's our ratio. Make that a bit smaller. Slide that in. And then we're also going to need the income statement for the last four quarters because we're going to use the most up-to-date information instead of just the annual reports. So for here, we'll go to G8. Once again, transpose FMP income statement back to A1 for quarters of data. And this is income statement. Okay, so for net income, we'll go equals net income, and we'll turn that into dollars, shrink it down. For our ROA, our return on assets, we have that in our ratios column, and we'll make this a percentage, shrink it down. Okay, next we need our operating cash flow, and for that, we're gonna need our cash flow statement. And for that, we can just go over to our income statement, copy and paste, and we'll change this to Cash flow statement, A1, quarters is good. That's cash flow. Back to our formula. We're going to want equals operating cash flow for the most recent quarter. That's operating cash flow. Also make those dollars, shrink it down. And now we're looking for cash flow from operations being greater than net income. So we'll address that here by saying equals if cash flow greater than net income, then return one, and if not, return zero. Okay, next we need our leverage. So for this, we're looking for lower amount of long-term debt in the current period compared to the previous year, a higher current ratio this year compared to last year, and no new shares issued. So for our long-term debt, we're going to need the balance sheet. For that, we can put right below our income statement. And again, we can just copy our formula over, change this to balance sheet, 
and change this to A1. And we'll make it five quarters so we can look at last year's Q2 numbers compared to this year's Q2 numbers as well. The long-term debt last year, we can pull this from balance sheet and that's gonna be our long-term debt as compared to long-term debt for this most recent quarter. And for our current ratio, we're gonna to need to go back to our balance sheet and we're gonna divide our total current assets by our, our total current liabilities. So here we'll go equals, and we're looking at last year's numbers, total current assets divided by total current liabilities. Okay, shrink this down to do two decimal places, that's fine. And then for our current ratio, for our most recent quarter, change that to MRQ, same thing, we'll go equals total current assets divided by total current liabilities. And for our outstanding shares, we can pull this quickly from our enterprise value with an FMP. We can do that down here. And for our EV, we'll go equals transpose FMP enterprise values back to A1. In this case, we'll go two years. So we have our outstanding shares last year and our outstanding shares this past year. So for last year, number of shares, and here for B19, outstanding shares for this year. There we go. All right. Lastly, we need our operating efficiency. And for this, we're going to need our gross margin year over year and our asset turnover ratio for the same. Drop those in, clean this up, put a line under here. Okay. For this one, we're going to need not just our ratios TTM, but we're also going to need our ratios for last year. So to do that, we'll go down to this box, transpose, FMP ratios to A1, we'll just do one year, okay? Gross margin last year, so equals gross profit margin, okay? This we can make a percentage, shrink it down. And for this, this is gonna be TTM, we'll go equals gross margin, get okay, percentage, shrink it down. And next we need our asset turnover last year. For this, we can also take from our ratios, so we'll go equals asset turnover, and same thing for our TTM, okay? Hit OK, should be TTM. That's all of our variables. Now we can start to fill out our score. So we can go to the top here for net income. So we wanna know if our net income is greater than zero, then one, and if not zero. It's a one, very nice, center these. Next, our return on assets, current year, if it's positive, so same thing. In fact, we can just drag this down, nine. Yep, that works. Operating cash flow, pull this down again. And for our last variable, we wanna know if our operating cash flow is greater than our net income, then return one, and if not, then return zero. Moving on to leverage, here we wanna know if we have a lower amount of long-term debt in the current period compared to the previous period. So in this case, we'll go if the most recent period is less than last year's period, return one, if not return zero. Next, our current ratios. So we'll go if most recent quarter is greater than last year, return one, and if not zero. Okay, and then outstanding shares. So for this, we wanna know if our shares this year are less than or equal to last year's and show one and if not zero. And we have a one because this year's shares are less than last year's shares, which is good because it shows that there's less dilution. Okay, next operating efficiency. And here we wanna know a higher gross margin year over year and asset turnover. So same thing, so equals most recent quarter greater than last year, then one, and if not zero. And same thing for asset turnover. We can just copy this, paste it in B25, B24. That's right. This is our F score. Just go equals sum. And for this, we get an F score of eight, which is pretty good. And next, we'll add a few signals. Merge these, and we can merge these as well. We can go equals, call back to that cell, make this much bigger, make it 18. All this just to make sure the conditional formatting works. I'm gonna go plus zero to ensure that Google Sheets tracks that it's a number. Over here, we'll go if C3, or our F score, is greater than or equal to seven, then buy, and if not, sell. Center, center, 18, bold. All right, we'll add some conditional formatting to this. And we'll say if the value is greater than or equal to seven, then turn green. And if it's less than seven, turn red. Okay, and for our buys, conditional formatting, text is exactly buy, then show green, and if not, sell. All right, looks pretty good. Last, we can show grid lines off. Let's give it a test. Hey, Apple's a buy, nice. Let's try some active stocks this week. Snapchat, sell, too, good. 
AMD, 6, Quite, TNT, i8, Verizon, i7, Neo, Cell 4. There you go. That is the Petrosky F-score. And again, what he's looking for are companies between seven to nine. And he would say to buy and hold those that are seven to nine and sell anything else. This is just another type of analysis that you can implement to your own strategy. And I hope this was helpful. If there's anything else you want to see, let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Bye.